What's it saying what are you for there? Eleven F. All right, guys, it's me, Brian Cockrell, aka the tax man. I've got Billy Moore here. I'll let him tell you who he is. Billy, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks very much for coming, son. Thank you. My name's Billy Moore. I'm an author of a book called The Prayer Before Dawn, which is now a critically acclaimed movie of the same name, starring Joe Cole out of Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Gangs of London. Yeah. So oh, yeah, what an honour to have you here today. Is it true? I've heard this little whisper that you're uh, a stuntman for Stallone. I was a stunt stands in, Brian. Stunt standing, right? Yeah, yeah. Stunt standing, yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah, I worked. I worked with. I was just a young, a youngster. I was in the um, Thailand, Chiang Mai, and I got a job. Um, as a stunt standing for Stallone, right, and that, right. that happened. Yeah. That, how that happened was, um, I was in a gym, uh, and I recognised this kid who thought was a fighter because I was involved. In the Muay Thai boxing, yeah. And I seen this guy in the gym, and I asked him, "Was he fighting?" He said, "No." I said, "I recognise you." He said, "Yeah, you might remember me off Coronation Street." And to be fair, I didn't watch Curry, but it <laughs> was familiar. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I asked him what he was up to, and he said he's making a movie, Rambo Four. And right. A week later, a casting crew came in, took all the details of the montage. Mm. and took me picture I said we'll be in touch and a couple of days later I got a call saying will you be Sylvester Stallone stunt standing and I was like right. yeah alright so, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a joke that did yeah, yeah I yeah. thought it was a bit of a joke Brian and um, it wasn't yeah but I grew up watching like all the Rocky movies yeah they were so, marvellous weren't they yeah. he, he was my hero I think like when we did uh, like you did the boxing and the weights and stuff I think in that era it was like Probably the golden era, wasn't it? The eighties. You've seen all the Salon, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. Everything, there was nobody into drugs, wasn't there? It was just all. It was yeah. everyone was just into the movie stuff and wanting to train and it's a really, different yeah, thing now. But what was it like being a kid in Liverpool? And obviously, he's an Evertonian fan, you know. So it's like you know, what was and, it like yeah, being a yeah? What was it like growing up in Liverpool? What was it like at the moment? I, mean, I think we grew up in an era of it, but like we had none. We yeah. really struggled. Yeah. I was the old star of six. I no, lived in a family there. You know, you know, with the dad, you drank a lot of alcohol. It was quite volatile. Mm. And we always wanted to be out the house because the atmosphere wasn't wasn't good. Yeah. Um, and that led to standing on street corners, yeah. trying to get in with kids who were drinking, not wanting to do what they did, but having to do yeah. it just to fit in. Yeah, yeah. Then that, you're that, a bit that, like a sheep, aren't you? If you yeah. don't do it, you, you obviously... You, you Peer pressure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That led to... Um, that led to... Like, uh, Decades of devastation and destruction. Yeah, you're into trouble yeah. and things like picking, that. Picking, picking up a substance. Um, and, I, and I suppose when you say you pick something up, I picked it up to change the way I felt because I felt. Uh, did you get bullied as a kid? I did, yeah, yeah I right, did, right. I did. I got, yeah, you know, I had yeah. loads of freckles. I got called shit splash and um, I had knobbly knees and ginger hair and you know. And, mm-hmm. A bully, a bully's dream, and like I was a bully to say. Yeah, I think the reason I got bullied was because. I never had the clothes oh, that. Yeah. It was the, the yeah, clothes that yeah. the you know the other kids had like you know. Yeah. Back then it was like Farrah and Ben Sherman, right. and we had like council estate clubber from like. Yeah. Same as me. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think um, that made you into a fighter? When, when was the catalyst when you thought I'm not I'm not running away no more? I'm going to start fighting back. I was getting bullied by this kid, and I was like, my dad told me he was a boxer. I'd never actually seen him have a fight. Right. But I wanted to impress him, and, and, and I went and joined his club because I thought, you know, yeah. thought if, if I joined the club, he'd, he'd, he'd want to know me more. Right. Yeah, well, you know, he did. He saw was a bit he more. Was he the same? You talked about your daddy, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did, he, did he box your dad or anything like he that? Said he, yeah, he said he boxed, but I've never yeah. seen him. But he showed yeah. an interest when I joined the club. And, right. You know, I, I, I remember getting in the ring and having a spa, and Paul King was the trainer back then. And he says, you're really good at defence, because that's all I did, is I put my hands up, because right. that's all I'd ever known. I've oh, been right. beaten as a yeah, kid, and, yeah, yeah. and all I did was put my hands up and protect myself, and, and that's what I learned. So it come distinctively. Yeah, it, it, it come instinctively, and then um, this kid started to throw punches at me, and I reacted, and, and I beat him up, and I felt good about it. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm not taking this no more, I'm not tolerating it. It wasn't, um, I didn't go out and start like thinking I was the big I am after no, that. It's no. just like I felt, I felt confident. Yeah, I think when I when I when I was getting bullied, and I had a fight, and I, I won my first fight. It was like a, a, a millstone lift off me. Oh, I just, this is better than run away. I'm not going to run away no more. No, I'm not going to fight back. And did you feel like you had to try and impress your family a little bit as well when you were a kid? Just not try, not impress, but try and make them proud of you. You never got an back off them type of thing. Did you feel like that? I think it was just trying to be loved. 
Yeah, if that yeah, makes yeah. any sense, you know, to make sure I'm a bit corny to some people, but for me, it was like I wanted to, to feel a part of my own family, I wanted yeah. to feel loved, I wanted to yeah. experience that intimacy. Yeah, you, the more you seem to do, the more you feel like yeah. nothing's happening here, yeah. nothing's coming I was back getting, here. Yeah, I was getting shouted at, screamed at, yeah. told I was worthless, yeah, and, yeah. and I wasn't going to... Uh, yeah. Amount to nothing. Yeah. yeah. So I believe you. Yeah. It does stick where you're done. It it's also, your head, it's right? also, you know, if you tell someone at an early age, constantly, every constantly, day, yeah. they, they become conditioned to believe that that's right. their life is, is, is not going to be any value. And that's yeah. what I, that's what it was yeah. for me, Brian. Yeah. 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 So, but what, 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 when you left school, did you have any things of a job or anything? Mm. Did you have like, and you had what you wanted to do as a I job? Don't, I don't know, like a YTS course. Yeah. Which was like a youth training scheme yeah, back I then. Done that, yeah, yeah, done yeah. that. Yeah, uh, done that. But he ended up uh, doing it in Boston and Lincolnshire. Yeah. Trying to be a chef. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I wanted to yeah. join the army. Yeah. I wanted to box for England. They had loads of different ideas and different plans. And, yeah. You know, and then. Um, well, what, 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 what was the. When did you start the drugs then? What age were you in? Did you start them? I'd, I'd say in Liverpool, I was pretty late in the sense of like it smoked cannabis about the age of 16. Right. Um, LSD, Which a lot of people doing, and yeah, yeah, it was like it was like LSD and cannabis, and we living another part of Liverpool that we that, that was smoking heroin. And and do, you think, do you think like um, do you think that if you didn't take and you'd be like outcasted type of thing? No, I, I think um, I think it felt that lonely. You wanted to do it, yeah. I felt that lonely yeah. that I wanted to be a part of something. Right. Uh, I know where you're coming from. Yeah. And, and to, to, to do that, I had to join in. And when yeah. I did, I enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie, I no. did enjoy, like, yeah. the, in the early days, it was fun. It was like, yeah. I was giggling because it was using cannabis, or it was, it was a trip, and yeah. I was enjoying it, and it was quite... And it masks, doesn't it? It's it also, in your head, it? Yeah. It was a ticket away from the household, a ticket away from the atmosphere. Mm. Yeah. So what what, what would you... Did when was the last time you went to prison? So uh, to be honest, mate, it wasn't that long ago. To be fair, mm. I'm talking about here. Uh, I went to. Have uh, you been to prison in England? Uh, yeah, you, you, right. You, you, so yeah. I'll tell you what happened, right? I was in. I'll tell you, I was in Thailand. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. It's a long time. I've been over on a backpack and all the uh, to Bangkok, which right. ended up turning into five years. I've spent a lot of time in prisons over there, yeah. sharing the shells with. Did you do a five year stay in the country or five year in jail? No, I was on three years in. The prison and five years in the country in totality. Right. That's, that was like off a three month backpack and what, what, what was what was it like going to one of them? What would what to I've seen some of the jails, I've been over there myself, but I've never actually been in the jails. So what was it like going to them jails compared to the jails over here? It must have been horrendous, was it? It was frightening. The experience was yeah, the yeah. first night it was like I slept next to a guy who died. Right. And in between a, a guy who died and, and a lazy boy called Tiffany with fucking big tits. That had no series and a top on, right? That said, no money, no honey, right? right. <laughs> and I yeah. let a pair of dead shorts with a big yeah. crazy bulls in it for some yeah. Adam skins, yeah. to be fair. But a couple of months later, he looked yeah. like Beyonce. <laughs> he did, he did, I thought I'm gonna end up sleeping with him. Yeah, did, did you feel um, that, that fear? Do you think did you, did you get over that fear? You, you had to fight, didn't you? Get over there. Uh, well, how did that come to find that itself? Um, uh, see, see, what happened was I went in when I, when I went, I was smoking loads of crystal meth. Right. It's like a yabba, most most right. it's called yabba translated into English is called crazy drug, yabba. Yeah. So it's crazy drug. So it says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. I was smoking that, I was paranoid, I was I, I was I was aggressive, I was I, I, there's a lot going on anyway. Yeah. Goes in, so I'm psychotic by the time I goes to this prison in Bangkok. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm taking loads of tramadol. Before I got arrested, I came off a motorbike in Lao. The bike I crashed into these two taxis. Right. The taxi smashed the bike in half. The bike went right through my stomach, ripped up my um, uh, my abdomen. But I'm coming. I've got a stitch from here, Brian, right yeah. the way round. Right. right. This is in a third yeah. wheel country, by the way. You virtually cut in half. Yeah. The, yeah. the chassis had landed on my chest. Yeah. Right? And, I, and I've got a uh, the handle back on right through yeah. my stomach. This side. Did you think you'd had it? Yeah. I thought yeah. It was it. It was over. I've got a thousand methamphetamine tablets in my pocket. This is the reason I went over. So to buy them. So I could supply myself and supply others over there. This is the way I was thinking. But this this injury you now I got rushed to an hospital that was five miles away in a wheelbarrow, right? Blood was pouring out of me. Irish guy he'd seen it happen, he's just seen a foreigner. He said he thought it was Russian because he had that Russian look, he said. Yeah, yeah. Get to the hospital, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> it was like it was just really difficult. So I got turns onto my side and all of a sudden it was like <gasps> 
En dan is hij kent meer Arabië. Yeah. Um, en mijn flat. En hij heeft ook gewoon back to Thailand. En spent een drie maanden los om. Met drie zeven geloperations. Maar dan ben Sommige nog gaan de medication is wel brein. Yeah. Misschien het slaan het wel. Ik heb een raarste baard en ik ben ook een boel. Ik heb ook een keer in de eerste keer gebouwd. Ik heb ook drugs, ik heb ook mooie drugs. Ik heb ook een schepen. Maar ze krijgen hem. Je weet, aan we hebben nog niet. Ze vonden me. Ja, ze hebben een. Ja, ze hebben een. People have seen films where you. Is it true that you'll see the guards betting on each other and things like that? Is that. Die vlog, die de time is waar je het vet. On any, you know, yeah. they'll bet on who's going to die in the HIV yeah. world. Right, right, right. So they were going, hey, Billy, would you like to bet on like Nindam? He's going to be two days. We'll put this on, or he's going to rank himself. And it was like, yeah. it was just it, brutal. No yeah. value on yeah. life, really, yeah. right? It was no value. Like, wow, they just bet on the weirdest things ever. And, and, and to be honest, it's illegal to bet and gamble over it. You joke. You can't even have a game, a, 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 <laughs> can't have playing cards. Yeah. That was against no. the rules. There was right. rules. 10 rules that we give out every morning on a tally. Right? One of the rules was you can't commit suicide. Right? I was like, what the fuck? You're having a laugh. You're serious. I was like, you know you get killed. Yeah, and I was thinking, one day, like, I was there, no, the one day, there was a few days, uh, like, I was, I was like, right, I wanted to end my life. And I asked this, I could buy a pair of, like, walking around in flip-flops, yeah. shorts, you know, I wanted to hang myself off the, off the, off the, um, off the, the cage. And um, he went, no can do. I said, well, why not? He said, it's a case to do it. Who's going to be asked? Who's yeah. going to know? He said, what happened was, which is true, collectively, as a shell, and there's 80 people in that shell, do get, get punished. It's just one big, massive room, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So there's, 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 so it's a big room, and then you're, you're lying in rows of three. Right. So you've got legs. It's like it's like a getting packed in, like a tennis of yeah. And at the end of the cell, you've got two toilets, uh, basically holes in the ground, a black bin that had... Water <laughs> twice a day that yeah. drip in, so you use that water for the whole eighty inmates, and you'd have like a bowl of sticky rice and this like fish head soup, which stunk. Is that what you've got to eat every day? Yeah, but you'd have to share that between five years, right, right. so there'd be a plate, and then five years just sit around it, and you'd have to squat. And I got to do all that, like, like yeah, you know, like the Chinese do, like get on the knee, yeah. like, you know, I had to get used to all that, right? Um, they were um, quite. I don't know. They were, they, they, was it the embarrassment as well? The, the toilet in front of all them. Well, it did, yeah, it was like you know you, the, the height of self obsession is shitting in front of in front of seventy nine inmates, yeah. right? I remember being in Durham. And they're all, and yeah, yeah. in Durham, it was out in the eighties. First went to jail. You you go to the toilet and the door was up to you. You'd be sitting on the toilet doing mm. your business. And be, hey, Brian, I think it's so embarrassing, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. You get you, you've got to get over that pretty quick, and you know you, you end up on a solar quite a lot. How did you? How did you? What was your coping the mechanism? Was it the fight? Were you, was the weights or anything to train with? Not like that. Nothing. It's the weights, right? Like, like, was like paint pots with cockatiels in it yeah. and a brush pole. Yeah, and literally. Like, right. Trying to train the wall with <laughs> yeah. paint, paint, paint pots. With, 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 there was no gym to sort of, but you loved Thai boxing. Right. It was like it's like it's the born to fight. It's like what's over here playing probably what's yeah. Liverpool Everton type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. The tires yeah. are blessed with venom in every part of the limb. Right. Every limb is blessed with venom. The elbows, they yeah. were they were they were they were lethal. My boxers are junior schoolboys. Yeah. Uh, so I enjoy fighting. Yeah. Not like fighting just because of, I want. I enjoyed. I'm going to tell you, you know, a broken yeah. arm and 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 a cut and that. You take me out of the ring and you could emotions, the feelings. Mm. So that was my escape yeah. to get in. That was like Physical good. pain yeah. was great, I could take it, but right. emotional pain, yeah, yeah. the relationships, the let downs. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? 100%. So it was, it was, it was, it was, for me, it was like an escape line. The physical, the physical pain isn't as bad as the emotional because the emotional stays with you. Yeah. But the physical, like you say, you got a black eye, goes a couple of days, or somebody bullying you, or, or somebody in your back, and mentally it's, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So what, what was, what was that? Did you ever lose in any of the fights? Did you win all of them? No, oh, no, I've battered loads of times. Did you? Say the minute, this guy's so she's just like, I remember, I remember, like, did you win? This thing this, 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 this Italian kid was getting bullied, this American, uh, right. Alzo and John, right? They, they were assholes. Now, like, yeah, but yeah, these, yeah. these were getting bullied by their own people. Well, right, right, so right, by Westerners, yeah, right, right, not by right. Taj. So I've, 
Black Hammer, another that of course, I thought I'll bring, bring it on myself yeah. to like, like yeah. to, 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 to stop this. Yeah. You know, I'm getting involved in something which wasn't even my fight. And, um, you think that's because you got bullied as a kid yeah, yourself? Yeah, you I did. And I was like, I also shared, right, to be yeah. honest, but I was leaving yeah. him, uh, turning him, well, you leave them alone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that yeah. I was, who the fuck are you so? So it was these two Australians and then they're ready, so I can see, we'll see you in the morning. But it's all right, sounds, yeah. I thought, what the Fuck, have I said that for? Yeah. So now I like, you know, my, my ego's involved here and all yeah. that prize and yeah. the doors opens. So I've come out and I'm like that. I'll, I'll fight you. But I didn't expect to be fighting three of them. One's hit me over the head with this little chair, smashed me over the head and then she saw a stars. Yeah. I never went down, but I know one on this kid's neck. And it's yeah. just, 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 you know, that was because he was close. Yeah. That's yeah. you do. You just, you just, awesome. you just do what you do. Yeah. And then, yeah. I took a few punches and I was blowing and I was screaming and they, because I'd bit him, he was screaming and yeah. the screws came running. I dragged everyone off. I'd been dragged down to the the, the, the hospital downstairs and, and I remember this shy guy saying to me, you no good boxer, because, you know, you, yeah. you no good boxer. And I thought, you the fuck, bang, so I him and then I'd been it over the head with a bat. No bat the, yeah, yeah, the screws. Yeah, yeah, so I'd been over there with a bat and then I'd been dragged down these stairs by my legs, and my head just bounced off every step of concrete steps, and I, and I got put in this compound. Right. And that was it. I, I was just. What was the punishment like there? Did anything take a punishment? Did they give you? I've seen them when they hit them with the sticks on their feet and things like that. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it. She, yeah. she, she, I, you know, you, it wasn't really. She, she, foreigners were subjected as badly as. Because right. we had, we had, a, we had the embassies that could get involved. Right. But right. we still, yeah. it was still, there was still a lot, yeah. still brutal. But the ties they be eating, you know, I've seen it. Guards, commands, always the call. They be eating yeah. ties across the, the balls of the ankles, the soles yeah, of the feet, that's, that's smacking them, yeah. beating them, really bad. You yeah. remind me of that. Remember Billy Hayes, the same when he went to Turkey and he got captured. He went, hey, remember that film, yeah. Midnight Express? Yeah. Remember, remember, remember me of that a little bit, you know. But uh, he went through a lot. Didn't he? See what it is, Brian, right? You know, to be a storyteller, you've got to remember the story, yeah, right? And yeah. you've got to be, you've got to be telling the truth, right? Of course, you know, yeah. I, I, I find that, like, she, like, when I wrote a book, I thought I could invent, I could recreate yeah, yeah. a story, right? I could invent myself as someone different, right? Yeah. I thought, I don't want to, I don't want to write that. Yeah. I nearly fell in love with a lady boy called Tiffany, right? right yeah. I'm going to write about that, right? Yeah. My name's Yusuf Muhammad because yeah. all the lads have judged me. I'm not going to say I got beat up by these kids. I'll say I beat them up. Like, yeah, yeah. part of me wants to shake. I'm going to... Uh, yeah. And then I thought, you know what? Don't worry. Yeah. There's a shame. You can feel a baker and get away with a bum, but if you feel yourself, <laughs> you'll end up with none. Right? So I started writing the suit. Yeah, I think... I was crazy. Yeah, I, th- I think... Yeah. It's like me with, my, with the addiction to drugs. People say, oh, don't say that in your book. You're going to shoot yourself. Them. But it's the truth. I want to tell the truth. I don't want to tell lies. And, and like, you, like you said, we, we talked on when you're going to fight, people go, oh, I might not win this fight. He's going to beat me. And, and I think when you write the book and all, when you tell the truth, you feel like there's a millstone lifted off because you've told the truth. It's out there, everything about your life. But it shows that you're human as well. Of course it does. Yeah. It shows that you're human. It shows yeah. that you've got human feelings, that you're real. Uh, it doesn't matter how big or how hard. You know, you, you, you know, I growing up, it was like the idea I had a big year for. Yeah. I don't think that was true. No, no. No, that was because you're a big fella. Yeah. You, know, that, you know, that, like, we've all, we all have the same. We've got the heart. We all bleed. We all cry. We mm-hmm. all have feelings. But people try to pretend there's something they're not in. People can see through, can I? I know he's a great guy. I've spoke to him. I've got him like a house on fire. His brother's his hero. Mm-hmm. He's just a great guy, you know. And I just knew we'd tell the truth. And the same as me, I think... Like your book's been fantastic, hasn't it? Yeah, well, it, it went from like, um, I tell you what, it wasn't easy. Um, I remember. Did you, did you, did you write, write it and then think, oh, I'm not writing that script, rip it out? She you keep, me, did you keep doing that's what I did at first. So, you know what, Brian, right? So, shut down, right? And I'm wrong, I'm on bitter roll. This is right, no lie. Right. I, wrote, I, was in, I was in a prison in Thailand and I smuggled bits of toilet roll bits. Oh, is that where you written yeah. the book from? Yeah. Right. Bits of, and she analysed everything, and she analysed everything, and got it into one's way of prison, I got transferred. Computer, so I wrote and typed this book out. You know, it's took me a couple of years. Um, I tried to sell it, no one would be interested. I had a great story for it, you know. Uh, and eventually, someone took it on board, and, and within six months, it became an international bestseller. Right, within within uh, two years, it was uh, it was taken to be made into a movie. Mm-hmm. But three years later, from three years from the beginning of writing, it was on the, the big screen. Right. Yeah. What was it like to go and watch yourself actually on the cinema? Was it yeah, a, I was... I was a bit big at it. Cannes Film Festival, right? It, 
It's like, <laughs> so she looks so, 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 <laughs> so look, I'm standing on the red yeah. carpet, right? Yeah. Blagging it. No one knows that I'm using drugs. In, in, a, in a brand new truck, she's all looking like James Bond. <laughs> feeling like I don't fit in. Feeling like an imposter. With two and a half thousand people cheering and clapping me achievements. Like this film's been, I'm watching it. I think, fuck, man, I felt sorry for the guy, innit? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Fucking, yeah. Man, what's that? And then um, it ended. And, and all I was thinking about was like, me next year's up, and he's right. go. Right. Well, everything, you, you, your whole dreams come to fruition, and you, you, you're thinking about going down stairs mm -hmm. and using. And that, that, that's a sad, that's a. That's when, a when, when, when did you, what was the day you thought, I'm going to do this no more? The drugs. What was the? I know we've. I've done it myself. I've stayed off, and you do this thing where you stay for two weeks. It's called the honeymoon period. Yeah. Thing. I'll be alright when I go out to have a few goals. Well, see, and I always say the same, Billy. One goes too many, a thousand never enough. Well, that's that's yeah. saying. I, I, yeah. start, I stopped using initially. Right, I addressed. I'd say I addressed my addiction in two thousand and four. Right, right. I, I stayed clean for three years. Went to Thailand. I relapsed. I got back from Thailand. I got clean again. I stayed clean for five years, Brian. So right, last long time it is. Five years right now, I believe I would have still been clean today if he hadn't and then but what happened was he uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Right. So I had stage three cancer. Right. Right. Uh, well, you're going through it, Billy lad. Uh, hepatitis. Is from the prison yeah. over there, yeah. Hepatitis uh, and uh, meningitis. Right. I was on the chemotherapy, I was on loads of medication. The medication became like a crush and I, and right, and I right. used three drugs on top of the medication and I relapsed and, and mm -hmm. with that relapse like this is you know, I'd read a book by this time the movie was getting ready for the big screen um, we'd already done the canned stuff and in 2000 I broke into my neighbour's house right right. I had a bit of a cob on with him um, it was embarrassing and you know just no escape I was, no. I was using drugs fucking between my head and well, easy bastard, I'll just go and break into this. I'm really embarrassed, ashamed of what I'm saying. Because you've got to remember, I haven't been in trouble for over 10 years. Right. Right. I worked for the NHS. I was a drug and alcohol support worker. Yeah. Uh, I had a house, a car, a relationship. Everything was going well for me. Right. I had this cancer, and I was uh, losing my mind with everything, and I, and I had a break into my neighbours. Right. Um, and then he ended up... Were you in a bad place? Oh, yeah. Brian, I was paranoid. I was... Um, you know, and I don't deny this. It's... it's, um, it's, it's I ended up going to prison again, right? I got put in prison for two and a half years. Right. 2017. But, you know, you don't go to prison for two and a half years these days, do you? You do a year and then yeah, you get, yeah, yeah. You, get um, you get like what you call like curfews and sex. But, you know, yeah. for the first time in my life, you know, I went to prison. Did you stay clean in there? I did. Right. Uh, I've been clean now since September the 23rd, 2017. Right. I haven't used since. Uh, that's just one day at a time, and and, and that's, yeah, that's that's the best um, way to do it. I don't, I don't smoke, I don't drink. You know, and the two of you know, I miss it. I wish I could go and use, but the reality is, there's there's a consequence. Course, yeah. If there wasn't a consequence, if I could go, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy that and have a bevy, mm. and I put it down. I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that for me. But I'm, you don't, you don't enjoy it, yeah, because no. I'm paranoid. One, a lad said to me once, once every time you go on, you get it. Every single time. Well, for me, I had like an allergic reaction to drugs. I didn't break out in lumps and bumps. I broke out in handcuffs, pain, misery, and loss. And for years, yeah, yeah. Brian, it was. Um, see, this is what happens if I pick up a substance. I, I end up in places I don't want to be. I do things that yeah. I don't want to do. And with sound, a clear, a clarity of mind, I wouldn't be doing them things. So one reflection, I've got to live in that shame. I've got to live in that embarrassment. And although I've done this and broke into this, yeah. this, this guy's house. Yeah. I, I took property. A part of me like knew it was wrong, and I retained every bit of that property. That's good, yeah. I did. I retained, and the judge said to me, "I've never known anyone to retain. Come to the court and bring it." Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know. Because when he said, "I've got to go out," you look after your brother and that, and you, and you, I just know you're a really good lad, and and a lot of it stems from your childhood, doesn't it? Your environment of your own product and things have happened in your past, and you try to take things to mask them, and you think, "If I do that, that I'll, I'll forget about that now." I take up this and but it comes back, doesn't it? Yeah, but I think back. we've all we've all done something that we're ashamed oh, yeah. of. And I think every one of us. I think like see see people go, I've never done this and I've never robbed that. But I tell you something, right? I bet you've robbed the serenity or the peace or the love out of your mum's 
you know, yeah. eyes and, and, yeah. and you know, are they going to bed worrying about you? And that's what I usually do. She's to be worrying about me. My son's going to get locked up. I don't mind if he gets locked up because I know where he is. But she was afraid that the door would go where the police had been saying he's son being killed or yeah, he's lost, you know, he's, yeah. or he's just somewhere else yeah. being killed. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, now it, it, I think what's important is if we change, yeah, continue doing what we're doing, then it's, you know, it's justified to, to you tell. Mean, uh, Albert Einstein said that Sandman and Sandy is doing the same thing over and over again mm. and not changing. So, that's like walking yeah. into the wall, walking into the wall, just doing the same so thing. So, you're going to repeat the same mistake and expect a different result, then oh, obviously, yeah. there's no change. See, now, now it's, it's been about three years now, and I've, yeah. I've, I've got, you know, I, 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 swear, I swear, I've got my shit together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not about me telling you what I do that's going to be beneficial to the community because I know what I do. People who, uh, they were glory hunters and, and want to just start taking pictures of things and say, yeah. look, this is what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So you're doing it for a, a motive, you're doing it for an agenda. Your motive is to let other people look, look how great I am. Yeah. Now, secret service, sounds a bit like him outside, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it quiet, silent service. Yeah. Hey, you, Brian, are you doing things? And I know you do. It's good to promote stuff and um, yeah. build a platform and, and show others that um, you, you have changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for me, the change that yeah. You have to change yourself because if you don't change yourself, you can't. You can't. It's like it's like being a bit of hypocrite saying I'm not on drugs when you're on drugs, and people think and people where you live, they're not. He's still on drugs, still taking drugs. He's full of rubbish, mm. and you get them doing your false testimonies to give. But uh, yeah, you've got to be true to yourself. I think I've yes. If you're not true to yourself, you can't help no one. No, you can't. Yeah. That that's that's. And you've got to forgive yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's for me. It's like. You, when someone says you, you need to make amends, the first person you need to make amends to is yourself. Of course. Uh, and you want to love yourself as well. Yeah. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your family, you can't love your kids, you can't love your wife. Uh, doing what I did and going on the places I went to, uh, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, yeah. Due to, you know, fuck it, get out of your mind. Well, well, well like you're out today, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't have no. done anything about it. But uh, what was the scariest thing you've ever been in, would you say? Was it when you went to jail in Thailand? I was in, there was a young kid, and I'd seen him regular. He was a young Thai kid, he was about five years old. And they were up to get the little gangs, as they are. Yeah. I'm trying to keep myself to myself. I'm in the, the Bangkok Hilton, there's 20,000 inmates, there's three different prisons, bomb bath, there's loads of there's women prisons. There's three really big, massive prisons. It's, massive, it's like a compound within a compound, and prisons within prisons. Right. And on our prison, and I, a prison, the segments alone, there was a thousand inmates in one unit. One unit, but I, you can't even get that out of prison, like with wings. Yeah. So we've got a thousand inmates on one unit, little gang, central side, mid side, the uh, northern side, and this this can guy. You, can you walk about anywhere? Yeah, it's yeah, like it's, right. it's like it's like the city of God. You get up and right. jump at seven o'clock. Right. It's the hottest, the forty degrees. And you you you're fighting for a bit of shade. You could fry an egg on the pavement and that kind of stuff. You feel like you're gonna pass out with it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And the yeah. water, you know, you you, you get into, you know, you, you're under subject to dengue fever and and, and and all this stuff. But this kid got him. Um, this kid come running towards me, and I seen this guy with a uh, with a knife in his stelzel, in a pair of flip flops. You could hear it as he's running. Right. And he's screaming, and this kid next to me come running out with a chair and smacked him right in the face. And as he's done that, he slipped. He's lost his balance and he's gone on the floor. And this other kid was stabbing him. And I mean, Brian, yeah. I've never seen any like it. It must have been about 50 times. But the, the shots weren't like, like in frenzy. It yeah. was like calculated, but you, the, yeah. the blade was yeah. massive. Yeah. And it was going in his chest, in his back, in his right through his neck, right, like right through his cheeks, in his legs. He was just all over. Yeah. And there was a crowd that stood around him and it was, um, they were screaming. Ten cow and car man, and I knew that what that meant because I knew Ty by then, and I was saying kill it and stab him. You know what I mean? Right. As if he was a dog. You know what I mean? And what had he done? Did you know what he had done? I think it was something to do with drugs and phones. Right. So it was. Yeah, it was just. It was. It was drugs and phones. Do you and think if them jails were over here, Billy, people would think twice about going to jail? Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, yeah. it, it's it's brutal. You know, I've been put in shells that are like. Like they were four foot high and three foot yeah. wide, you know, for weeks, you know, eating fucking sticky rice with all bugs yeah. in it, and you know, it wasn't pleasant at all. And, and I've been put on to for all those punishments. And then when you come back in, you went to jail, the like when I went to jail in the 80s, it was like slop out, you had to poo in a bucket, pee in a bucket, 
you were in 23 hours a day, you got exercise, if it rained, you didn't get exercise, mm. you got maybe association half an hour, they were like brutal, you couldn't lay on the bed, if you lived in the bed, you got nicked, you got nicked for anything, and you was matched about, because they were all ex-army in, in, in them days, yeah. but now, when I, last time I went in 2010, um, fighting again for someone else, saved somebody's life, um, I got to jail, Every I was on a view, but this everywhere you go for, for people, so it was now, I was Brian Cockrell, Mm. Oh, it's Billy Miller, I remember. You always get when you've got that name, you get you picked out. There could be a hundred people there. They always remember Brian Cockle. So I've been arrested for so many stupid things I've never even been involved in, or people using your name. So, did you have you had that yourself when you were in? When you were no, in I think no. more for me, it was more like yeah, it was more hands on stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I never had I never had like a reputation on the streets. Right, right. I wasn't not like yourself, Brian, where yeah. you know you've got that history. My yeah. reputation was, was not on yeah. I was, I was it's all rubbish, mate. Rubbish. Man, yeah, mate, yeah. I'd, I'd probably get called a fucking like a junkie. That was it. You know, yeah. fucking. But I, I don't, I'd never back down. Mm. You know, I, I, I just, know that. He's that... off of the three times already. <laughs> I'm at the bill. <laughs> <laughs> I've threatened him with their jaw. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, a great uh, guy. Yeah, it's just, it's, he's a good laugh and we've, we've had a good talent in the haven't we? It's just yeah, been, been great. It. But it's, uh, yeah, so... What's what's in store for you in the future? What do you think you, you want to do now? I know what you do, but for the folks who are listening. So I've, I've started a podcast. Uh, you know, I was encouraged to do that by James English. And right. Event, How long have you been doing it for? Uh, since the beginning, since the end of October. Did you so, ever think, while well, the stream, 10 years ago, you'd be here doing these type of things? <laughs> no, I did, uh, to, be, to, yeah. to be honest, I, didn't, I couldn't, see, be, I couldn't no. see past the, the next day. I... I, I I wanted to die every day when I was away. I, did, you know, I, like, did, yeah. like I, I was waking up and thinking, I want to yeah. escape reality. I can't face the, the day. Uh, you know, and there was something inside me that just said, look, just, just stay with it, stay with it. Yeah. And, and I said it, like, you know, I changed my name to Yusuf Muhammad and name. And I blagged it. You knew I was blagging it, like, yeah. as a Muslim. That's mine. Um, and it just get the engine room alive. Yeah. You know, and but what I did find out, right, was... I found that collectively, as 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 a, a group of people, there was unity. Yeah, uh, I felt safe. Know, yeah, he, so, he, you didn't know them as family or anything. Oh, I'm not friends. Yeah, you still but we don't want to. You know what I've got the ability to do. You know when I struggle, Brian. Okay, yeah, yeah. ego size and, and the big yeah. I am. Yeah, I pick up the phone and, and I reach out. Yeah. And if you don't reach out, you'll never yeah. find out what's yeah. going on with him. So I always, um, I, you know, I was never big on religion. Right. Um, I believe there's higher powers or something that yeah. I, I know. My, my brother is our job. He's a bit, yeah. he seems to play yeah. uh, religion. He, yeah. he, he's, uh, I was the same as you, but like, it just comes to you some days, some people that come to you and there's boof, different person since I'm in religion, helping people, change my lifestyle, looking after people. But I've always been that thing in me, where I've got that, that heart where you've got, you've got the same heart as me, you've got a yeah. soft heart, so you can fight for fun, you're not scared of no one, you won't back out of no one, but you won't see injustice. Like, I don't like to see injustice, yeah. I don't like to see bullying, no, I, don't I don't like to see kids with no There's some other food, people out there, like kids are starving yeah. and things like that. I've got my kids in the street, with no food in the bottom. I won't give them money, but I always buy them food, I've got them carrying bags full of food, and I do it all the time, I'm still doing it now, you know, but... You feel good to go to bed if you get up in the morning and you go out and you help someone, even just help somebody cross the road or help somebody change a tire or something like that, just doing a good deed. And, and I say to them, pass it on. And then if they pass it on and they pass it on, in the end, whole world mm-hmm. helping each other. I just think that's the best way to go. Yeah, yeah. And this year, I'm the best fighter. Who gives a shit? Who's the best fighter? Who's the strongest? Who's this? So we're all humans. We're all, we're all the same boat. We should all be helping. It's, it's nice to be, to be able to achieve a few things in the sense of, like, you know, physicality wise, you yeah. know, as, as a youth. You know, it's good to, to be yeah. physically in, in shape, which is it, it's important. Of course. Going healthy, forward. But healthy, but yeah, healthy, but healthy man. Healthy, but healthy man at the same time. Yeah. And then doing something positive with it. You know, but it doesn't mean, you, you know, you build yourself up and then you yeah. start taking people down because yeah. of it. Yeah. Or, like, you know, you talked about, like, internet trolls and, and bullying, yeah. which yeah. is important. I don't, yeah. I don't agree with bullying. You know, I've took advantage of people in the past. Yeah. Um, been, yeah. You know, yeah, Brian. Uh, and I, I, I feel, like, with too much that I feel, and it's like a shame. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. it, didn't you, Bill? Deny it. But it's it. Yeah, yeah. It was like... You've got to be honest to yourself. And yeah. I, 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 another thing is, somebody said to me, I was at a bodybuilding show once. There was a kid on there. He, I trained him. And he was 11 stone. I got him up to 13, 13 and a half stone. 
So that kid achieves something. If you go to the gym, you weigh 10 stone, you get yourself to 12 stone, you lose the body fat, you get a six pack, you've achieved something. Mm. Don't go to the gym and think I'm going to be the next Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not, not saying you can't be, but a lot of people can't. Just do do the best to your ability where you can be. Mm. And if you can do that, you've achieved something. You get people trying to be, oh, I'll bench some more weight, I'll do this, and just, just do your own little small goals as long as you're training. Yeah, yeah. Like you believe that he's, like he's boxing and everything. So, did you, you box for England as well, didn't you? Oh, school boys. School boys. I'd, I'd like to say, I'd like to say, Ted, like, but yeah, yeah, box. yeah. I, was at a, I was at a level where I could have competed uh, a lot more than I did, yeah. but, you know, I, like, I, like I said earlier on, it, it was it, drugs sort of stuff. Yeah. They became more important than, than anything yeah. else. Be, be, become, more, become more important than my family, become more important than anything. So what, you know, you do, what would you do these days? Then. Now today, you know, I work alongside uh, Weapons Down Gold Soap, which is here with Tony Bellew and yeah, he was saying, yeah. Price. We he's do. a lovely man, Tony. You know, I've never I, met him. I, I haven't myself. Yeah, and no, it's, it's, yeah. you know, what he's lot, doing is fantastic, isn't it? We've got a lot in common, yeah. me and Tony, in a sense of like, uh, yeah. But moving forward, yeah, you know, I'll be doing a lot of e-learning stuff, you know, teaching kids how to. So you talk about knife crime, and I like that the fact that there's there's, yeah. there's, there's knife crime. But let's let, let's put let's have a place. Put down a knife, right? And choose a life. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah. Put down a knife and pick up a bat. Put down a knife and pick yeah. up a gun. Yeah. Right. So we've got it like the whole kind of concept of yeah, like the yeah. weapons down. So I'm gonna yeah. put a knife down. I'm gonna pick up a baseball bat. Yeah. I'm gonna pick up a, a gun. So it's it's the totality of it, right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, so we're go, I, you know, going in and delivering. Uh, the talks just being real. Yeah. Reaching people where they are. Uh, not saying like because I had fellas coming to my mars house when I was a kid with, with shirt and ties on and clipboards and telling me I need to stop doing this and you then you don't listen to the yeah, no, listen because they haven't been in the field like we have mm-hmm. when you talk about knives I'm talking about guns or bats we've been there we've seen people killed we've been in that uh, position so we can we can uh, talk to people and oh I've got the tax man so the job the things I did in the past I know they were bad but it's helping me now to help people today yeah. so, you go there and the kids are listening to the police, but no disrespect to the police, they do a good job, no disrespect to the prison officers, no disrespect to social services and people like that. But when they go, this class them as the enemy, yeah. and the teachers just walk out, they're not interested when they're talking. But people like yourself and myself, you, you, I think you've got to go there. I think you need to, I was talking to a, a mayor, I said, I think you need to go in the juniors and teach them before they go. It's not it's no use on that so many paths. You don't want to run that path. So if you go into the, the grassroots, into the schools and teach them what knives do and what guns do, you're going to stop them going on that path. You don't want them off the path. You want them not to go on it. Look at the history, Brian, right? Look at the history of, um, of, of trying to change yeah. people's behaviour, right? Over the years, like, like the campaigns that have been going on, right? Yeah. Like, well, what campaign is actually going to work, right? I remember not, not for me, ever happens in school. No one ever come in and says, oh, we're going to do this and this is going to change. Yeah. And this is my experience. It was only later in life that someone, like, that I knew that I changed, that I thought it was possible. I knew it was possible, but I seen it. Uh, but you've got all these campaigns going on. Well, what is actually going to work? You know what I mean? We can go into schools and tell them all day long, look, I've done this, I don't want you to do it. But the reality is, you've seen it, I've seen it. People right, are on the phones now in schools. Yeah. They're not asked, they're not interested in listening to you. Yeah. Right, um, but there is that one. Yeah. Right, it doesn't matter. Yeah. There is that one. And yeah. that one person can change 50 lives. That's right. Well, I went, me and my wife, we went to get our t- tyre changed. Yeah. Uh, a garage tyre was worn, went in the garage, and I went to pay the man for the tyre for 80 quid, I think. He went, your money's no good. I went, what do you mean? He said, well, I've uh, been watching you on your YouTube, and I've been watching you on your documentaries. He said, my, my son stabbed somebody at school. Mm. I put, let him watch your documentary. He's changed his life wrong. Mm. So just watching you on that YouTube, he's changed his life from a different kid now. So I can't take that tyre because you saved my son's life. And that type of thing makes you keep wanting to fight. Mm. And we're getting inundated of Oh, what you don't keep doing, keep keep the, the YouTube channel, keep the tip of the day, it's going, keep yeah. going. Because there's people sitting in the house depressed to death, and you're giving them a bit of hope, aren't you? Yeah. Them, that's one of the most important things hope. And people are f- f- texting me back saying, I've never been in the house for 10 years because you've been doing these tip of the days. I'm out of the house. I haven't seen my family for six years. He's out. So you get that good thing. I think you know, I'm helping people yeah. and with the church and that we've done. Well, you're well. inspiring people, and people, yeah. I, I, I get. Get it as well. Just looking to the DMs, send me messages and say thanks for your, your story and yeah. how does you get through it. And I think it's just kept breathing and it, it, that's yeah. all you have to. The only thing, I'm, there's nothing special about me. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing different. It's just that we, I've probably got that fighting spirit. 
Mm. I, think special, I think you're special. I think you're special. I really do. Thank you. And I think you're special because you're here today and you're helping people with your story. That story you've got is just amazing. It reminds me of there's not many people I can really say who's is, is more amazing what you've done, mate. I can really. I don't, I don't think I could have got through it myself, and I'm not scared of nothing or anything. But to do what you've done to get through that and come to here today is just amazing, believable, mate. Thanks, Brian. So right, we're going to shout and just thank thank Billy for coming. I love him a bit, and Joe, we love you too. Yeah, brilliant, mate. Fantastic. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Nice one.